So the Samsung Galaxy A15 ended up coming around, so I wanted to go and make a video of explaining completely how to use this phone as a beginner. So if you're a complete beginner, this is essentially how to use this device. It's not anything super insane, it's a pretty good phone, but let's go and break it down exactly how to use it. Now on the exterior, you're getting your display. It is a pretty decent display, it's an AMOLED display this year, and it's 90Hz, so it's actually a pretty big upgrade coming from the previous generation. You're still getting this Infinity U display at the very top, pretty thick bezels around it, but it's not anything super crazy, it's still a really decent looking phone for the most part. On the left side, you're just getting this kind of pretty much like plastic, but a really good, you know, built phone. You can see at the very top left, we have our SIM card and micro SD card slot. We'll talk about that in a second. At the top, we just have a microphone hole. At the very bottom, we have a couple of things. One, we have our USB Type-C port. We also have our headphone jack right here too, and a speaker grill. So if you want, you can just plug in things via USB-C. You can plug in a headphone jack here too. Then you have your standard speaker grill right there, so nothing else super crazy. On the back side, we have our triple camera setup at the top left, which is pretty insane. We have this plastic feeling phone. It doesn't really feel that bad though. It feels actually pretty good still, but still a very good looking phone nonetheless. And on the left side of this phone, depending how you look at it, you have your fingerprint sensor right here, a little bit of a dip right here, which actually gives this phone a little bit of a cooler impression. And you have your volume buttons right here as well. So on the exterior, I will definitely say Samsung did a really good job and overall it's a pretty good looking phone nonetheless. Now to get started, you probably want to put in your SIM card. So putting it in is actually very, very basic. It's not anything super insane for the most part. So if you can see from the top left, what you can basically do is you can just go ahead and basically grab your SIM card eject tool, just like this. You can input it within this hole right here. So what you can do is you can just go ahead and grab your SIM card eject tool like this, and you can just go ahead and put it within this hole, and you can go and just slide it in. Now when you do that, you should be able to see that it'll just pop out a little bit, as you can see if you just slide it in very gently. So what you can do here is you can just go ahead and grab this and pry it out pretty normally. So you can just go ahead and grab this thing just like this and you can just pull it out. Now on one side you'll see your micro SD card slot and the other side you'll see your SIM card. So on one side you just want to go and put in your standard SIM card or your nano SIM and the other side you want to put in your micro SD card and that's all you really have to do at this particular stage. Now what you can do here is you can just go and place this thing and just slide this thing in as you normally would. So slide it in just like this, and your phone should be able to be booting up for the most part, and that's basically it. Now powering on your phone, you have a couple of different ways. So for one, you can basically just double tap the display. So you can double tap the display like this, and you should be able to turn it on. You should be able to double tap to turn it off. What you can also do is go ahead and click on the power button on the side. So you can turn off the phone on or off just like this. Now within the display here, you'll see a few things. So at the very top, you'll see your basically your status bar. So you'll see your time at the middle of the lock screen, but you'll also see your status, you know, your cell phone status. So whatever cell phone provider you have, you'll see right here. You'll also see your particular, you know, percentage, your battery percent, or other things up here too in the top right. So you'll basically be able to see that from this particular stage. In the center, you'll basically be able to see your time. And then you can go ahead and basically see notifications here and everything like that here too. So nothing super insane, just some standard stuff. At the very bottom, you'll have your phone call icon. So you can slide this thing to the right to see your phone calls. Also slide this to the left if you want to go into your camera quickly. You can also hold down on the lock screen if you want to basically edit up your lock screen. So it's a very cool thing. You can quickly change things if you want to. I'll let you kind of tap into this and kind of just, you know, kind of modify it further. This is where you can have a little bit more fun and kind of change this whichever way you want to. So it's genuinely a very cool thing that you can kind of modify as well. Hopping out of this, if we go and come back to our lock screen, we can basically go and click back here and then we can go and swipe up. And now we're on our home screen. Now our home screen is, you know, a pretty decent home screen as well, it's not anything super crazy. The top is the same as it was before, so just your standard you know, status, your status bar. You'll basically see these widgets and the app icons as normal. Now if you want to, you can grab a widget like this. You can go and move it around. So if you don't like a widget, you can go and hold it down right here. And you should be able to just hold it down and you can remove it from your home screen. Also do the exact same thing with your status bar, or your search bar, or anything like that. App icons, same exact way. You can hold down an app just like this. You can move it around, you can kind of put it wherever you want to. So that's another advantage there. You have these folders here too. You can add apps and change these apps or delete these apps whichever way you want to. You can also go and grab an icon and bring it to a different page by swiping over like this. Now if you see if we swap, if we swipe it between these particular you know, pages, you can still see that the dock stays the same. The dock is always going to stay consistent. So you can go ahead and basically move whatever icons you want to into the dock and the dock will always stay consistent no matter what you do. Now at the very bottom of this page, we have a few things. One, we have three nav bar icons. So these things are basically the ways we can kind of maneuver around with our particular phone. So if we make our way over to our Google Play Store, this is where you can download all your applications. If you want to come back home, 
you can just click on this middle button right here to basically come back home. You can also swipe up if you have the gestures, but if you swipe up here, you'll just get into Samsung Wallet. So if you get these pop-ups, you can allow or not allow, but that's one thing. Now let's say you're in an application, and let's say you click on a page and you want to go back to the previous page. You can click on the back button right here, which will basically bring you into the previous page. If you're on the main page and you click back, it'll take you back home. And if you want to see a list of the recent applications that you've used, you can click at the three lines right there, and it'll show you all the applications that you've recently used. And from here, you can swipe out of them. You can get into split screen multitasking by tapping on the particular application here and getting more you know, kind of information from it. You'll see recently used apps, or you can click close all to completely close out of all the applications you have in the background. Now, if you want to see all the applications you have on your phone, you can swipe up on anywhere from your home screen and you'll get into your app library. This is a massive list of all the applications that you currently have on your, you know, your Samsung Galaxy A15. So you can go and kind of figure out which particular apps you want to see and download and all that stuff. If there's a particular app you like, you can download it you can get out of it by swiping up or down. And you can also search for applications by clicking on the search bar up here. And you can, you know, basically see whatever apps you want. You can kind of, you know, go from that, you know, specific page as well. Now to go back home, you can click back home and you're back here. Now if you want, like I said, there's a lot of basic applications on your phone you may already know about. Things like your phone application, messages for messaging people, your Google Chrome, you know, browser here, which is your internet browser you can use. And things like your camera app, you can go and, you know, take photos and everything from this particular application. So you have that particular, you know, stance, you can basically do things there. But then our status bar, if you actually swipe down, you basically come into this panel. This particular panel does actually have everything from your notifications to a lot of other stuff. So you can see all your notifications here. If you get a text or something, that type of stuff will come up here. Now, right here, you can change your brightness. You have two different toggles as well, device control and media output. So you can go through and increase or decrease your brightness depending on whatever way you want to. You can toggle on or off your Wi-Fi or Bluetooth icons as well, which is genuinely very cool. And if you want, you can swipe down from the top just like so, and you'll come into this page. This page has, you know, houses a bunch of different toggles, so you can quickly jump into your Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. You can quickly power down your phone by clicking on that power button right there. In this case, we'll just go back. If you swipe down one more time again, you'll see your other toggles. I mean, you can do screenshotting here. You can do, you know, airplane mode, flashlight, a lot of, you know, interesting stuff you can do on your phone right here. And then you can also change your brightness and smart view and all this other stuff too. Now, the last thing I want to show you is within the settings app. So you want to swipe up and you want to click into settings. Now within settings, if you ever run into any problems or you have any questions or anything like that, you can always just go into settings. You can click on the search bar up here and you can just search for, you know, a specific thing. Let's say you're searching for Bluetooth. You can just start typing in Bluetooth right here and you should be able to find more settings and options for your Bluetooth, you know, panel. Swiping back out, you can find all sorts of other settings as well. You can see things for connections, you know, sounds and vibration, display, battery, so many things across the board, which is genuinely very cool. If we swipe all the way down, you'll see this little thing for software update. What I would recommend doing for every single user out there is to click on software update and download and install the latest update you can basically get for your device. If you have the option to, I'd recommend updating your phone as often as possible if there are updates available, because this will you know, basically secure the fact that your phone is as secure as possible, and that's exactly what you want. You want your phone to be as strong and as secure as possible for as long a period of time, and that's exactly what's going on when you're getting this phone. So that is basically at a high level how to use your Samsung Galaxy A15. A big thing I'd recommend doing as well, for those of you who don't know, putting a case or screen protector on your phone, that'll basically make it so your phone is as, you know, again, secure as possible. And by, you know, making sure it's, you know, hardware fine, you're probably not going to run into problems where this phone is breaking or cracking or anything like that for the most part. So that pretty much covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video.